festive. Kyle, my hair's getting a lot of play on the old Twitter today. But I feel like I just want to, you know, show a different look. That was good. They, they're coming in with a lot of thoughts. Okay, are you familiar with the movie Labyrinth with David Bowie? I love it. That look came in. Uh, yeah. Gary Oldman is oh, Dracula. Not a look. No, no, David but they, they got a lot of opinions on it. I like this I look. I like this look. This is amazing. Super Bowl 5 2. Got this right here at the NFL Experience in Minneapolis. I'm sure Alex Flanagan also has one. Let's check in with her. She's not here. She's. Next to the Mall of America. Good morning, football to you, Alex. Let's talk a little bit here about Nick Foles. He has two former backup quarterbacks on the sidelines, and of course, his own head coach, Doug Peterson, and offensive coordinator, Frank Reich. How has that relationship sort of developed and helped them out to get to where they are now? Yeah, well, I think it's helped Nick Foles tremendously. I had an opportunity to catch up a little bit with Frank Reich yesterday, and he told me that what he'll remember most about this entire season is the organic collaboration that he has had with head coach Doug Peterson when it comes to creating their playbook. He told me that he actually has developed a secret knock on Doug Peterson's office door so that Doug knows that he's coming in to talk shop and to talk football, but it seems like they've really enjoyed that process, and I think it's been an important one for this Eagles offense. Remember, Doug Peterson and Frank Reich are both career backups in the NFL. Both played for 14 years. Frank Reich was part of the Buffalo Bills team as he backed up Jim Kelly that played in four consecutive Super Bowls. So Frank Reich knows and has that Super Bowl experience as well. Of Frank Reich saying, you know, when Carson Wentz went down and tore his ACL, the whole world started losing their mind and thinking the wheels had entirely come off on the Eagles offense but you know what Frank Reich and Doug Peterson looked at each other and kind of I think thought you know what we got this because guess what you guys they know how to support Nick Foles and put him in a position to succeed because at one point they were Nick Foles it's a great point as they say in Philly we all we got we all we need we've seen different game plans with Doug Peterson now since Nick Foles took over how do you think they'll be aggressive how aggressive will the play calling be in the Super Bowl on Sunday especially early yeah, Kyle, I mean, I think that is a big question going in. And, and Frank Reich telling me yesterday that you have a tendency in these games when you are calling plays to actually be more aggressive when you play call. He said that Doug Peterson will go into this game as a play caller with the mentality of you have to keep the Patriots off balance and that you have to stay aggressive. And I think we've seen this Eagles team. They've been very creative in their play calling, and they have been very aggressive. I mean, just think back to the championship game where they have Nick Foles throw a flea flicker in that game that turned into a 41 touchdown, a 41 yard touchdown to Torrey Smith and worked really, really well. So I think that we talk so much about the New England Patriots and Bill Belichick and all the wrinkles that they throw at you and how much studying their opponents have to do to be prepared for the unexpected. Well, guess what? The Eagles team, the underdog, the team that nobody has been thinking about, well, they're very similar in some ways to the Patriots in that we have seen them throw the unexpected expected at you so bill belichick you better watch out Do, don't be surprised at all if these philadelphia eagles come in with some wrinkles and some creative play calling on sunday you know what they always take big shots early alex thank you very much you've been fantastic all week i know we'll get more from you later thank you very much but now joining us i can't lie one of my favorite players in the league one of my favorite players he defined the, the phrase angry runs he is a running back for the New Orleans Saints, career highs in rushing yards, rushing touchdowns, and angry runs. It is my pleasure to welcome our guy, Saints running back, Mark Ingram. What up, Mark? What's going on, man? That's my guy right there. <laughs> oh, this is good. This is good. You are the best. Mark, listen, man, you're going to show some versatility. You're going to be a studio analyst tonight right here when the Madden NFL Club Championship final goes down. What can you tell us about the Madden Club Championship? And are you ready for the move to the booth? What's your style going to be as an analyst, man? Because I know you're going to come hard. Man, you know I'm going to bring the energy, man. You know we're going to have it turned up. Uh, I'm here with the NFL EA Madden Club Challenge Championships. And it's 32 players representing each team. They're playing for $500,000 and two Super Bowl tickets to the game. Um, you can catch the game tonight on ESPN2, ES 8 p.m. Central Time. And I'll be the analyst, and so you know it's going to be turned up. You know it's going to be fun. We're going to bring some energy. It's going to be a good time, so make sure you check it out. <laughs> Love that. We might have to go to that, Kyle Brent. You are one of his favorite players. 
But I don't think you'll be mad to know that one of my favorite players this season was your teammate, your buddy, Alvin Kamara. Rookie sensation. I love the fact that the two of you not only coexisted in the same backfield, but you guys were like best friends having the time of your lives. What makes your relationship so special? And please tell me you're hanging out all offseason. I just feel like it's genuine, you know. Uh, he wanted to see me do well. I wanted to see him do well. Uh, from the beginning, we talked about having the best backfield in the NFL, and that's what we were working for. That's what we strive for every single day. That's what we pushed each other for every single day. And uh, it's just a blessing that uh, the season turned out the way that it did, and we were able to be the first backfield in NFL history to have a 1,500 uh, scrimmage yards as a duo. And um, we're going to keep working to build on that, man. That's my brother. That's my homie. We're staying together in the same house out here in uh, Minnesota. So we are kicking it this offseason so far. All last week at the Pro Bowl yes. this week right now. So um, <laughs> we're, we're kicking it heavy. <laughs> oh, we follow you on social media. We know you guys were at the Pro Bowl owning that. The Saints were just my favorite team because of sort of the characters that you guys had there. It didn't end the way you wanted it to. That Vikings game, though, as a fan of the NFL, one of the best of the season, what was your emotion, emotional roller coaster ride like? Did you take us through that moment, that whole game? It was tough. You know, we were down. 17-0, but at halftime, nobody was phased. Nobody was wavered. Everybody was still confident. We felt like we had some situations that we didn't capitalize on in the first half, so we were able to claw it back, climb our way back, and take the lead twice in the fourth quarter. And um, the last time we took the lead, there was 30-some seconds left. And, you know, we were all excited, figuring that we were on our way to Philly for the NFC Championship, and we weren't able to finish the game. But uh, I kind of like to look at this season as what we were able to accomplish uh, being NFC South champions, having seven Pro Bowlers, uh, having a great year, turning around from three years of seven and nine. So I feel like we have a good foundation. I feel like that feeling that we had uh, versus Minnesota will catapult us to the next level. And uh, I feel like we had the players and the attitude that it won't hinder us, but it will help elevate our game. No doubt, Mark. You guys are way too talented to not be back in this thing. I also know you're aware of our Angry Run segment, and you're aware of it, man, because you've tweeted about it. You've won the thing about five or six times. You pretty much inspired the segment, and you are what it means to run angry in my mind. So here's what I want to know. I want to know where that motivation comes from. Every great artist has their motivation. We're going to do something we call the anger scale. I'm going to give you a scenario in life. You tell me, Mark, one to ten, how angry does it make you and why? Number one. You wake up, you got a big, busy day, you look at your phone, you realize it didn't charge overnight. You got 1% battery left. Where does that go on the scale? Man, that's about a 13. That's angry. To start the day on 1%, that's angry. That's furious. <laughs> the furious scale, you already broke it. What about you sit down at your favorite restaurant, you order the fries, and the fries come all soggy and drippy and greasy, and you say, how am I supposed to eat this? Where's that on the scale? Listen, man, you talking about some real angry situations. Fresh fries that come out soggy at the restaurant? That's 10 plus, easy. You got to have fresh, crispy, hot fries. No way soggy. Soggy fries will make you hot. <laughs> Safeties are going to get run over next year because of soggy French fries. Oh, how about this one? You're in the playoffs. You think you're going to win. You're going on. You got the lead. Everything's going great. And then this dude named Case Keenum just chucks it up to nowhere. The guy catches it and runs. Next thing you know, the season's over, and you don't know what happened. Where's that rank? That's immeasurable. We can't even put that on the scale, man. That, 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 that was pain. That was hurt, man. That was, uh, that was a tough loss for us, man. That hurts. Why are you going to bring that up, man? We're talking about some good stuff, and you want to bring me down, man. Don't do this to me right now, man. We're having a good time. <laughs> You know what? You're right, man. But that's how you get angry. Use that. The great artists use that's that. That's how you get real Mark angry. Ingram, <laughs> one of the best, one of our favorite players on this show. Kay loves you. I love you. I love you, man. Congratulations on the offseason. Go get it, man. We'll see you soon. Thanks so much, Mark. Thanks, Ingram, guys. I appreciate your show, and I appreciate that segment. Row. Plenty of guests here on the show rolling through. I think I see Mike Daniels, the guy who wears, like, 12 chains. Is that him right there? Yo, Mike. Mike. Daniels joining the show in a little bit. But you can still vote right now. Cash Edge Clutch Performer of the Year. Kamehameha, yeah? Yes. Uh, we've got Carson Wentz, the aforementioned guest, Mark Ingram, Drew Brees, Antonio Brown. Is it Stephon Diggs? It's up to you to vote at NFL.com. And they will be announced the winner for the Castro Edge Clutch Performer of the Year during NFL Honors on Super Saturday, the day before Super Bowl 52. All right, we have a couple of legends right. on the show after this. Ladanian Tomlinson, there's Mike Daniels, though. We're breaking down the big game. We'll be back. Yeah. This is Good Morning Football. <laughs> Where you come from, man? <laughs>
<laughs> you, look good. you look good. The night before the biggest game in sports, it's the biggest celebration in football. Join host Rob Riggle along with stars of the gridiron and entertainment to honor the NFL's best performances, including the Walter Payton NFL Man of the Year Award. Go out of your way to make a difference in someone's life. And most valuable player, plus the announcement of the 2018 Hall of Fame class. Oh my goodness, he caught it! Touchdown! NFL Honors, Saturday at 9 Eastern on NBC.